Not too long ago, I created a video on how to build an approval flow in Power Automate, and I got some questions about building multi-level and parallel approval flows. So today we're going to look at both of those choices. We're going to start with the multi-level flow and click edit. Now what I've done here is I have created the single level flow so that we can quickly go over that as a reminder. The trigger is going to be when an item is created versus when an item is created or modified to avoid an infinite loop. I'm using a list to keep track of all of the information for this flow. So all I have to do is select the site address that the list is associated with and then pick the list. Next, I added the action start and wait for an approval. For the approval type, you have multiple choices, but I chose approve and reject first to respond. The title and assign to fields are required, so I use dynamic content to fill those out. When I click in the field, you'll see that the dynamic content box opens up to the right. Based on what is available in my SharePoint list, I can choose the employee display name and then type in requested training. I also used dynamic content for the assigned to field to pull the supervisor's name from the underlying list. Next, I inserted a condition control and had it say if the outcome of the approval is equal to approve, it will do one of two things. If yes, it's going to send an email to the requester and let them know that their training has been approved and then it's going to update the SharePoint list. We're using dynamic content again here to pull the outcome from the approval directly into SharePoint. Now let's look at the if no side of this approval. We're still going to send an email, but this time we're going to use dynamic content to also bring in the response comments so that the person receiving the email knows why their training request was denied and maybe how to fix it. The last step in the single level approval is to update the SharePoint list, but this time to put in the outcome of rejected. In this scenario, we're going to build a sequential approval, meaning that one approval has to happen before the next one. And when we do this, it's actually going to be easier to rename the steps and you'll see why as we go along. I clicked on the three dots and selected rename. And now all I have to do is change it to supervisor's approval. Let's go down to new step and type in approval and select the approvals action. And just like before, we're going to choose start and wait for approval, click the drop down and select approve or reject first to respond. Now I will need to put in a title for this approval. This time I am going to use the dynamic content to bring in the supervisor's name from the SharePoint list and then type in has approved training. For the first approval, the person submitting the request typed in their supervisor's name. In this scenario, I am going to put in a name in the assigned to field and pretend that only one person in the company handles training requests and the average employee doesn't know her name. Next, I'm going to put some information in the details field to give the approver some context as to why we are sending them this approval action. You may notice that the details field does not have a red star next to it, so it is not a required field. I'm just completing it as part of this example. Next, I'm going to go to the three dots and click rename one more time and give this the name of accounting approval. Now I'm going to click on new step and add in a condition control. And now you're going to see why I said it's easier to rename the steps. I want the condition control to look for the outcome of the approval, but I need to make sure it's the accounting approval and not the supervisor's approval. If you don't rename the steps, it can be difficult to know which one to use, especially in more complex flows. Now that we are all on the same page, I'm going to select outcome from accounting approval and set the status as is equal to approve. And then we can begin building the if yes side of the flow. I will choose the send an email action again. And notice I'm choosing send an email V2. The reason for this is it is connected to your Office 365 Outlook account, which is the business account that I'm using for this flow. For the two line, I'm going to use dynamic content. And here we see another example of why it's easier to rename our steps. I want to send the email to the person who submitted the request 
But here at the top, I see supervisor's approval and all my SharePoint items. What I really need is when an item was created so that the status will go to the person who created the training request. And then I'm just going to use some plain text for the subject line and the body of the text. You can add anything here that's appropriate for your scenario. I'm just going to put in some simple details for the purposes of demonstration. Now I'm going to add an action so that I can update the SharePoint list with the outcome of the accounting approval. And just like before, all I need to do is select the appropriate website and the appropriate list name. Then I will select the ID and I need it to be the ID from when the item was created. Then I will go back and enter the title, which is a required field. And again, I'm just going to pull it from the original entry of the SharePoint list. Then all I need to do is update the accounting approve or reject field. I can leave all of these other fields alone because they were updated at a different point in the flow. Now it's time to build the if no side of this second approval level. Now I could go in and search for all the connectors again, just like we did before, but there is an easier way. Click on the three dots next to the send an email action and then select copy to my clipboard. Now we'll go to add an action and then select my clipboard, which will then bring in the send an email action. Now all I have to do is update the couple of pieces that are different such as the subject line now needs to say rejected rather than approved. Let's do that one more time with update item. Click the three dots, copy to my clipboard, select add an action, my clipboard, select update an item, and now we're just gonna go in and update the few things that need to change. In this case, nothing needs to change because we're pulling the outcome dynamically from the approval step above. Now we have a multi-level sequential approval flow and theoretically it will run, but there's actually a flaw in the logic of this flow. When it was created as a single level approval, whether it was approved or rejected, we sent an email and then updated the SharePoint list. But now that we have multi-levels, the if no side of the flow should stop if the supervisor rejects the training request, accounting doesn't need to look for funding if there's going to be no training. The solution to this is to add an action on the if no side and look for the terminate control. I'm going to switch the status from failed to successful. And the reason we're gonna do that is rejected is a valid status. The flow did run successfully, but we still want it to stop. Now we're going to go back to the single level approval and build it like a parallel approval. And what this means is that you can send approval to two people at the same time, rather than making one person approve before the other person can approve. This scenario is based on a true story. As a consultant, I have to get my supervisor's approval for training, but I also need my customer's approval so that I can take time away from the engagement. If either person rejects the training request, the approval process needs to stop. So what I'm going to do is instead of clicking on new step, we're going to hover our mouse in between the when a new item is created and supervisor's approval, click on the plus sign, and then select parallel branch. As you can see, Power Automate splits the step so that both approvals will now be sent at the exact same time. Since we already built the exact same steps in the multi-level section of this video, I went ahead and just quickly recreated the flow here. And as you can see, we have our customer approval tied to a condition control that sends an email and then terminates if the outcome is not equal to approve. The main takeaway for the parallel approval is that the supervisor and the customer approval are up here on this top level and both must respond before the flow will then go down to this third approval, which is outside of the parallel loop. If either the customer or the supervisor reject the training request, the accountant will never get the approval notification because the terminate control is stopping the flow. If you wanna see how to actually approve the request, 
take a look at this video that's on the screen now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.